In this problem, we have a man standing on an iceberg. And what we want to find is the maximum weight that this man can be before this iceberg is completely submerged. So we have three forces acting. We have the weight of the man acting downward. We have the weight of the iceberg acting downward. And we have the buoyant force acting upward. Now, it's important to know what the buoyant force is. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the liquid that is displaced by an object. So, we have this iceberg that's going to be completely submerged underwater, and the amount of water that it pushes out of the way is going to be equivalent to its buoyancy force. So we can say that Fb is equal to just weight of the water that is displaced by the iceberg. Okay. Now we're given the volume of this iceberg as 1.2 cubic meters, and that's actually, since it's going to be completely underwater, that will be the buoyant force, or the, 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 uh, that volume is going to be the amount of uh, water displaced. So we can use that to calculate the buoyant force. The rho of the ice is 917 kilograms per cubic meter. Ice expands when it freezes, so it's less dense. Rho of seawater is 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter. So we know that sum of the forces equals zero. We're going to be in equilibrium. So let's put in our forces. We have the buoyant force upward, buoyant force minus our ice for our weight from our ice minus the weight from the man. That's equal to zero. So we're looking for the weight of the man. So we'll solve for weight, weight of the man. Weight of the man is equal to buoyant force minus weight of the ice. Okay, so we're going to do some subbing in for stuff here. We know that the buoyant force is simply equal to the weight of the water that's displaced. So I'm going to plug this in here. Equal to weight of the water minus weight of the ice. So we know weight is equal to mass times gravitational constant. So what we'll do is we'll plug that in. So we have weight of the water becomes mass of the water displaced times g minus mass of the ice times g. Now all we have to do is figure out these masses. Now we're given a volume of the ice and the densities. Okay, so we know that rho, our density, equals mass divided by volume. We're looking for mass, so we solve for mass. Mass is equal to rho times volume. Okay, so we're going to plug this rho times v in for our mass. The mass of the water becomes rho of the water displaced times volume of the water displaced. Now this volume of the water displaced is actually the same as the volume of the iceberg, right? Because this is our displaced amount. So we can just call this VI, because that's the volume of the iceberg, minus our converted M into rho of the ice times I the volume of the ice. So this will give us the mass of the iceberg, and this will give the mass of the water displaced. And since these were both multiplied by g, I'm actually going to factor g out there. So now, I know all these values, so I can plug them in. I actually could have, actually I'll factor out volume first, because it's the same. So we have roll of water, minus rho of the iceberg, factor out volume of ice times g. So, I plug in my knowns. Rho for water is 1025 kilograms per cubic meter. Minus rho of my ice is 917 kilograms per cubic meter. That's multiplied by the volume of 1.2 cubic meters.
and also multiplied by g. So I'm just going to put g over here since I ran out of room. 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So we look at our units. We're going to have kilograms per meter cubed times by meter cubed gives us kilograms, because the meter cubes will cancel. Kilograms times meters per second squared is just going to give us newtons. So that will be our weight of the man. So this is the weight of the man that we've solved for. So the weight of the man, after we plug all these numbers in, comes up to 1.27 times 10 to the third newtons. That's not three significant digits, because three significant digits is the smallest amount we have. So this is our final answer. Now, if we want to see exactly what this was in pounds or kilograms, we could just convert. We have 1.27 times 10 to the third newtons. We subtract, subtract, we, weight equals mass times g, what w equals mg. So we have weight here, we want mass, we just divide by g, 9.8 meters per second squared. So this will give us our weight now, well, in kilograms, we'll get our mass, not our weight, we get our mass. So this is in kilograms, and then we multiply by the number of pounds per kilogram. So there's 2.2 pounds for every kilogram. So I convert this kilogram into pounds. So the number of pounds you'd have to be are 285 pounds. So it's your final answer.